At the previous meeting of the Fed, uh, it released its summary of economic projections in which the consensus view of the members of the Open Market Committee or the voting members of the Open Market Committee, uh, plus, um, in fact, the, um, the Fed presidents, was that uh, the Fed funds rate would rise to a peak level this year of 5.6%. And so this morning we saw uh, the, ri the first of two rises we can expect from that, um, and that was the increase uh, in the Fed funds rate, the band from 525 basis points to 550 basis points. As the, the uh, market in Fed funds actually works, as it's administered by the New York Fed, um, that means that you usually have an effective Fed funds rate, which is eight basis points higher than the lower level. So that's 25 basis points plus eight basis points, uh, which gives you actually an effective Fed funds rate of 533 basis points. Uh, but uh, when I talk about it, I always say that's uh, 535 basis points. So we've had one rate rise to 535 basis points and at the next meeting, which is uh, not for another eight weeks uh, because there's no meeting in August, uh, we expect uh, the Fed funds rate to go up to 5.6%. During the meeting, uh, Jay Powell was actually asked about timing of rate cuts, which I thought was uh, very interesting. And even more interestingly, he replied and he said that he thought uh, historically, uh, it showed that uh, uh, the rate cuts began about a year after uh, uh, the rate hike cycle had come to an end. Uh, so that suggests that uh, when rates might be cut uh, would be the bottom end of next year. And in fact, that's exactly what the summary of economic projections uh, in the previous meeting uh, suggested that rates would reach a peak of 5.6% this year. But in the bottom end of next year, there would be a cut and they would get down to about 4.6%. So we now have the scenario for uh, uh, how uh, Fed funds rate hikes come to an end. Um, so what does that mean for other central banks? Well, the uh, European Central Bank uh, will meet uh, overnight our time and uh, Christine Lagarde, the president of the European Central Bank, has already provided forward guidance that there'll be a 25 basis point rate hike. So that will be exactly the same as what the Fed has done. Uh, we meet uh, next week, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat uh, delighted uh, that only three in 10 people uh, think there's uh, going to be a rate hike next week. Uh, which uh, uh, is very satisfying to me to uh, realise that seven out of ten people are going to be wrong. And uh, what's actually going to happen, of course, is that the uh, RBA will continue to uh, 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 to hike rates and then our rates will therefore go from 4.1% next week to 435 basis points next week. And it's very interesting uh, and, and uh, uh, to uh, repeat something that... Uh, uh, the um, the governor Philip Lowe, um, Mr. Philip Lowe, PhD, uh, remarked on uh, when he was uh, answering uh, some questions at the speech that he did for us on the 12th of July, and that is that uh, our rates are actually significantly lower than other similar banks. Uh, if we look at uh, the Reserve Bank of Canada, uh, their uh, uh, cash rate is currently 475 basis points significantly higher than us. And of course, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand, uh, their uh, rate is 5.5%, uh, which is way higher than even the uh, Reserve Bank of Canada. So um, uh, our rates are still very low. If we didn't increase rates, that would put pressure on the Aussie dollar and that would generate higher import prices and that just would not be helpful. Um, Interestingly, in addition to uh, putting up rates, uh, Jay Powell also remarked uh, that, well, he, he used the phrase in, uh, as, uh, in, the, you know, in terms of flagging the next rate, he used the phrase in determining the extent of additional firming that may be uh, uh, appropriate to return inflation at 2% over time. 
he's pretty much telling you that there's going to be another rate hike next time around. Um, but uh, in addition to talking about rate hikes, uh, Jay Poyle talked about quantitative tightening. And he uh, said, in addition, the, the committee will continue reducing its holdings of treasury securities and agency, de agency debt and agency mortgage-backed uh, securities as described in its previously announced plans. And those previously announced plans, it's not that it's selling any of those assets, but it's letting its balance sheet run down. Uh, and that means that it's not intervening in any way in financing the new uh, uh, debt issued, uh, that is issued with what I've been, what I pointed out in my piece during the week, a very significant US budget deficit, you know, 6.4% of GDP this year, 6% uh, of GDP next year and the year after that and the year after that. I mean, and that's, that's a lot of debt to sell. So the Fed is not intervening in any of those, uh, those sales of, of debt. Uh, in fact, it's, it's uh, letting its stock of debt run down. What that means is that's an increase in volume that comes forward uh, to be traded uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the bond market relative to foreign bonds, that increase in volume of US bonds uh, tends, uh, will tend over time to put downward pressure on the US dollar. So you have a period of weak, uh, you have an extended period of weakness to look forward to in the US dollar when it drag gradually goes down and other currencies go up. That's good for another way of putting a, a floor under activity in the US economy because it means that uh, the soft landing is even soft, is, is even more feather bed soft uh, than it uh, uh, than it currently is, but it also provides opportunity for a whole bunch of commodity prices, which uh, Australia is in the position of selling. Um, so uh, the Fed, do, it's doing its job. Uh, one more rate hike um, uh, today and another uh, rate hike expected uh, in, uh, in eight weeks' time. Uh, and then uh, we get to the, to the top of the cycle. But uh, other work has to be done, especially by us, uh, to uh, increase our rates to uh, uh, higher than they currently are. And we continue to expect our rates will wind up at five, uh, 485 basis points or three more steps further up. <laughs>